quick introductions. We have um, myself and we also have V on the call. Um, she'll be helping just kind of answer questions in the chat. So if you see her name on there, that's who you know will kind of be the expert. Um, I'll also be keeping my eye on the chat just to make sure if you guys have any specific questions as I'm going through the slides, I'll kind of answer those. Um, and that's about it. So a little bit about me. My name is Tyson. Um, I've been at Lucid Press for uh, more than two years now. I actually started out in customer success. So um, I have a pretty good you know, background working with customers and kind of working with training uh, customers on, on Lucid Press. Um, now as a graphic designer, I kind of work with uh, and manage all of our templates. So kind of used across our organization. Uh, so hopefully a lot of the tips that I provide during this webinar will kind of help um, you as you're building out your templates. Um, something that I've also noticed um, when I've attended webinars, I know a lot of people have gotten like a little webinar fatigue of how often they, they're occurring. So just kind of know we're going to keep it short. It's going to be around 30 minutes and then we'll do a Q&A uh, at the end. So a lot of great information that we'll provide. Um, so our agenda for this meeting will be focusing a little bit of our time focusing on the pain points that designers experience um, when they're creating brand templates. We'll then kind of shift our gears and kind of think about the other side, about the people who are using your specific templates um, and kind of the pain points that they might have. And then we'll jump into the kind of the main point of the webinar, which is our eight tips to uh, increasing adoption for your brand templates. And Intermix will have some poll questions in there just to kind of gauge um, some uh, information about you and kind of provide some some feedback and collaboration. So that's about it. Also kind of as a bonus to kind of stay throughout the webinar, um, at the very end, we'll be giving away a DoorDash gift card. So we'll just use our random name generator, uh, select somebody who's participating in the webinar and you'll get a free lunch on us. So stay tuned for that. So we're gonna launch our first poll question. It should show up on your screen right now. Um, we'd love to know, does your organization have brand templates already in place? Um, so um, you might just kind of answer, what are you using to create these brand templates? Um, we have Lucipress, Microsoft Office, Google Drive, Templify, Canva. Um, even if you answer that you don't have any brand templates, um, just know that this webinar will still be beneficial for you. Uh, so there will be a lot of great tips as you're kind of planning out which templates you want to build out. So just kind of know um, that's there. And if there's any that aren't on this list, be sure to enter that into the chat. Um, we'd love to know if we missed where you're creating templates. So I'm gonna click end poll and we'll share those results with you. It looks like the majority of people are using Microsoft Office. Um, and other. So very curious about that. Be sure to enter that into the chat. Um, obviously kind of funny at Lucid Press, we use Lucid Press to build all of our templates. So, um, but I know at other organizations that I've been at, um, definitely I've used Microsoft Office, definitely used um, PowerPoint to make a master slide. Um, some people are mentioning Adobe Spark, um, InDesign, Adobe Illustrator, so that's great. Um, another organization that I worked for I, I've actually done templates in Google Docs. So that actually works and, and works pretty well. Cool, so we'll go to the next slide. So yeah, enter down in the chat. If you're using something else that we didn't mention, just be sure to enter that down into the chat. We'd love to know. Looks like a lot of people are using Adobe, which is very common, um, so pretty good to know. Oh, and then our second poll question that we have um, is since this webinar is all about herding cats, we'd love to know if you're a cat person, a dog person, maybe both or neither. So go ahead, answer that. Hopefully you like the little meme that I post about there. Sometimes, I don't know, cats get a bad rap, don't they? So we'll give a few more seconds to answer. It looks about full right there. So we'll end poll. It looks like the majority are dogs, 52%. We have both 31%. I think I kind of fall into that boat. Grew up with a miniature schnauzer basically all my life. Uh, but there's definitely a neighborhood cat that I say hello to when I'm on my neighborhood walks. So love that. So let's jump into the main point of the webinar. So we'll be focusing on the pain points that designers experience. 
Um, and I think this is absolutely essential for realizing how to um, better implement all of your templates when we focus on both what experiences the designers have and the people who are using the templates. Um, so if you want to go right now into the chat, we'd love to know if we can predict um, which pain points you've experienced creating templates um, for your team. So go ahead, enter into that. Um, make sure, again, as a reminder, when you're typing in, change the option to all panelists and attendees. So don't forget that. So the first pain point that we're going to talk about is there's just a lot to do as a small team. So this is something we definitely experience at Lucid Press. Uh, we have about 80 employees and we only have two graphic designers. So there's definitely a lot for us to do and there's definitely higher level projects that we want to work on. Um, and I put down here how important it is that brand templates um, really empower our organization to not only customize content, stay on brand, but it also frees up our time as designers. Um, so for example, you might have requests uh, for a social media post or maybe like a one-off flyer. Um, and those things are definitely important, but not nearly as important as some of our larger projects that we're working on. And so when we can offload that by creating a template, that definitely helps us out as a small team. Also, um, even if you come from a large organization, this is probably still a pain point for you. You still have a lot to, to do. And from all the organizations that I've worked with that are kind of large, you have even more employees. And so you have more opportunities where people can go off brand. Um, and you guys are just blowing up in the chat. I can't even keep up with everything you guys are putting in there, but we have like information doesn't fit all in a template. Um, using photos that shouldn't be used, too much text. I know that's been kind of mentioned a few times, so good to know. Um, pain point number two that designers experience creating templates is all these different questions about what is a template? So I kind of broke it up into three subcategories. And this first one is people might ask for a specific template, but maybe it's just too specific. Um, so I know I've had someone reach out and they actually used one of our templates. They created a flyer um, for an organization and they said, hey, we would love to turn this into a template so we could use it for all of our other, uh, you know, all of the other companies that we're going after. And we started looking at it, kind of working through it, but they had made it so specific with that organization's goals, what they were going after, how Loose Press could solve it. Um, and so we end up thinking, you know, this was too specific. We can't really turn it into a template. Um, and that kind of moves over into the second one of people might have template ideas, um, but they might not be solidified yet. Uh, so I've had people reach out um, about creating a specific template. They're like, hey, we're going to um, send this in an email to customers, blah, blah, blah. Here's all the details. But as we kind of asked more and more questions, we realized like, how many pages do you want it to be? Uh, is this just like an image that's going in an email? You know, how much text? And so as you ask more and more questions, you realize, you know, maybe all those details weren't kind of solidified yet. And then the third one is a lot of people won't know where your templates are um, and just your marketing content in general. So that'll be something where, as a designer, I've definitely got questions of, you know, where is this? Where, how do I find this? And uh, we'll definitely be talking about that in our tips. So pain point number three um, is basically just all these different questions about how to keep content on brand. So as a designer, it's a little bit scary to make a template um, when you know that they can customize it. And is it going to stay on brand? And what program should I use uh, to make sure that it stays on brand? Um, I know a lot of people mentioned that they use um, InDesign and other Adobe products to use uh, templates, uh, but training somebody to use InDesign or uh, any other Adobe product, to be honest, is a lot of work and a lot of training and is a little bit overwhelming. Um, so I have a screenshot of our very first template that we created. This is basically just a slide deck that our sales use um, when they're talking to potential customers. Um, and so you can see on the left, we have a very simple page, it's just the cover. Um, they can just go in, drag and drop, add a logo, um, and then replace XYZ with the company name. So very simple, um, not much of a concern. But then we have something on the left or on the right where it's talking about how to drag and drop images and a specific feature. Um, and so this has 
what we thought as a designer, we were like, well, there's nothing to change on here. We've, we're going to lock everything down. Um, but I started getting a little bit of feedback and a lot of notifications that, hey, we'd love to customize this image on the side with a flyer of the actual organization and an image from them so I could actually just make it even more personalized and um, for the customer that I'm talking to. Um, so that was something where we kind of had to balance a little bit of the design with being able to customize it. So keeping it on brand, but also letting others um, change it up a bit. And that's about it. So we're going to launch our poll question of these three that we talked about, which of these pain points have affected you the most? Um, is that that your small team have a lot to do, a lot to manage? Um, is it more of these kind of questions about templates? Or is it just kind of these questions about how to keep content on brand? Um, and I also love Lauren's uh, comment in the chat. She just said, I feel so validated right now. So we're glad to know that as designers, we all have these um, pain points um, and kind of thinking about how to build out templates. So we'll hit and pull, share those results. It looks like it's pretty split um, between how to keep content on brand and a small team. So I definitely feel those. Um, and then templates, yeah, definitely 22%. Uh, so pretty cool to know that we all have kind of different uh, pain points that are affecting us. Cool. So now let's go into the pain points that template users experience. Uh, this definitely helps uh, just put into perspective and help plan out and anticipate what pain points these template users might have. So we'll go through these pretty quickly. Uh, the main pain point is where do I find marketing content? And that's actually the same pain point that designers have as well. So they'll get a lot of questions of where do I find this? Where do I find our videos, uh, this template? So you get a lot of those different questions in there. Uh, and we'll definitely talk on, on this specific pain point and how to address that um, with making content easier to find. Um, pain point number two is all about the availability of templates. So as you build out more and more, it just is a natural tendency for people to expect a certain template, um, especially when they can't find it. Um, and they usually, of course, want it right now. So, That'll be something where we'll talk about um, certain tips of how to make sure that um, you're organized with which templates you're going to work on next and um, how to communicate that to your team so that they feel that they're being validated for their template ideas and you can also get it done. Also, if you want to keep track of how many cats I have in this presentation, I don't remember how many I have, but it'd be kind of funny if you were keeping track and letting us know at the end. Um, pain point number three, love this image. I don't know how someone took this, but um, it, the main pain point is how do I use a template? So you get all these different questions depending on which software you're using. Definitely Adobe, they're going to get that question, that kind of fear of how do I use um, that specific template? Um, and there's just going to be a little bit of training that you might have to do to make sure that that adoption is going to happen. So those are kind of the main three pain points that I've seen. Definitely there's others about like things being too locked down, maybe too many layers being too complex, um, but if there's any that I might have missed, be sure to enter that down into the chat. Yeah, definitely, Joseph, I definitely agree with retraining. That's something that you're going to have to do all the time. So now let's get into the eight tips for improving adoption and usage for herding cats. So this is the main point. If there's anything I want you to take out of it, um, it's these eight tips. So be sure to think about which tip is going to um, be the most beneficial for your organization and how you can, can implement it today. So tip number one uh, is making templates and assets available. And I put this as the first tip because it's a great foundation as you're setting up your different templates. I know a lot of people will just think about, okay, well, I'm creating this template for my team um, and that's a great start, but they need to also think about how to provide those assets for the templates. So you have to think um, if you have a template for social media and it's just an image with maybe your logo in the top right corner, if a user goes in and swaps out that, that image with something that's very bright, has a lot of white in it, and your logo is also white, then it's obviously not going to look good and not going to have that contrast that you want. Um, so you will want to provide those assets of a logo, all of the versions of it, so that they can swap it out. Um, this is a screenshot of Lucid Press, how we manage 
our brand assets and admin can go in, um, add brand colors, their images, um, all their different logos and fonts. Um, that way it's all in there for them as they're kind of designing um, and making their assets available. Love V's question that she just entered into the chat. Um, are you making your assets available with your templates and kind of how are you doing that? Um, I know obviously you could use Google Drive, any other kind of uh, product similar to Google Drive or have that uh, a folder organized with all of those specific assets available. Um, that's kind of an option that I've seen um, that's very common across other organizations. Tip number two is to build a one-stop shop. So this covers the pain point of, uh, I don't know where all of our marketing content is, or I don't know where the specific template is. Um, we have a screenshot of um, what we're using right now, which is a um, software called Confluence. Um, it's an Atlassian product. So it's very easy to set up. Um, it's an internal resource tool. So you can kind of see we've created it for our sales team. We have a section for marketing and you can go in, they can just select a specific industry, go in and select real estate and see all of the content that we have for awareness and all of the content for lead capture and as, as that moves down the sales funnel. Um, and this is just super helpful. Um, and one thing you should think about is not just your brand templates, but all of your marketing content in general. Where are you gonna put that? Um, so this makes it very easy for us to put uh, all of our eBooks, videos, um, all of that kind of in a spot. So definitely kind of like a digital asset manager. Um, so think about where you want to organize it. Um, someone asked um, what software it is and it's called Confluence. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, we use it kind of internally for anything for documents. So just think about where you want to put all of your specific content. Just make it very easy. Um, another option, we used Wix. If you guys have heard of that, it's a free website building software. Uh, we just put like a password on it so that not the whole world could go in and go see our marketing content. Um, but that was, it was really awesome, looked great, very easy to use. Uh, we made it very visual friendly, but it made, it was a lot to manage just because we had screenshots of everything that we had created and uh, anytime that got changed, we had to update it. So it was a lot on our end to kind of do. So we, we switched over to Confluence and we like that a lot better. Um, tip number three is to be on their team. And I'm going to talk about this a lot. Um, but as you're thinking about which templates you want to create, whether you have a ton already made or you don't have any at all, um, I firmly believe that you need to be on the team. So schedule one-on-ones, meetings, uh, really talk to the leaders and just figure out which templates are going to be most important to them. Um, I know as designers, sometimes we think, oh, they are going way off brand on this. I need to make that template first. Or, oh yeah, they definitely need this one. And I definitely just encourage you to test that hypothesis and talk to them and just ask them um, specific questions. Uh, that really helps them feel that what you're creating is going to be most helpful for them. This is a screenshot from um, literally a survey we sent out in June <clears throat> to our organization. So we really wanted to make sure that they feel that we're listening to their specific requests. And obviously we have like a lot of five and fours, which is great, but we still have some people answering three. So that's something that we're still working on, making sure that we're building that relationship um, and that they feel that our content is useful. Um, one example of this as well is, so when we were creating our very first template, we did a ton of research, asked a bunch of people in our organization what they wanted. And um, we finally narrowed it down to which one and once that one was released, um, I reached out to one of the, the sales leaders, um, which is Nick Hatch. And I just asked him, like, how is it going? Like, what do you think about the template that, that um, we released? And he said, hey, I spoke with the team. Um, right now, our gut feeling is that it's saving our reps five to 10 minutes on each MSP, which is basically just a slide presentation that they create. Um, and that was awesome for us to hear um, because we know that if they if the template users are saving time or it's faster for them, easier, then they're more likely to use it. So definitely your first templates are going to be very important um, just to make sure that they feel like, wow, I really want to use this. I'm very excited. It's going to save me time. Tip number four. Um, also, if you have any other ideas of how you've built trust with your team, enter that into the chat. I'd love to know 
Um, definitely as, as a designer, you're kind of working with a lot of people in your organization. Um, tip number four, so promote with excitement. Um, so this is something as you're building out more and more templates, you're gonna wanna think about how am I gonna promote and advertise these new templates that I'm creating? Uh, we have a screenshot of a monthly email that we send out. So this is our June 2020 update of all of the content that marketing has created. So we have all of our blog posts, our podcast episodes, uh, all of our different, our new templates that came out. So that way it's just very visual, very easy for people to get a summary of everything that we've made and just and see very quickly where they can use it. Um, so that's kind of one idea. I know in LucidPress, there's an option when you're creating a template, you can say, um, notify everyone for you uh, via email. So that's something that we sometimes use. Uh, so that's kind of one idea. Other ideas that I've done is we'll take a screenshot of the specific template that we've made, made into a cool graphic and we'll just send it over Slack. So that's what we use to communicate, uh, just kind of announcing the template. Uh, another thing that we'll do is also email. If we made a template for the sales team, then we'll email the entire sales team and we'll just say, hey, here's this template, here's how to use it. Um, and just kind of announce it that way. Um, some other ideas uh, that I've seen is some people will have break rooms with TVs on them. So that's kind of one way to kind of promote a new template and then company meetings. So this is something that's really big. I do it every once in a while where if we have a new template, I'll just go up, train for a little bit. Um, if a department's meeting, you can also go there and kind of attend and, and promote that way. So great way to kind of just give information about new templates that you've created. Also, love the ideas that people are posting. Um, Bi-weekly newsletters, that's great. Um, regional lunch and learns, that's pretty cool. Um, Facebook group, that's awesome. So a lot of other great ideas in here. Um, Jira, I know we, we also use Jira, so that's another good place. So awesome. Um, tip number five, so, and this is also something, if you have ideas of how you've implemented a request system, go ahead, enter it into the chat. Uh, what we do at LucidPress is we use Asana, which is a task management software. I'll go to the next slide real quickly. Um, this just lets us see really quickly if sales, CS, other organizations are submitting requests, we can put it in our to-do, move it over to in progress, move it over to done, just keeps us very organized. But the best feature about Asana that I really love uh, is that you can create a form for people to fill out and it automatically creates a task for you. Um, so really love it. I'm not really sure what pricing is on Asana, but it's great. Um, you can also use Google Forms, that's free. So another great option for creating a form. You can also get email notifications when they fill it out. Um, and this really helps with the pain point of them wanting to submit template ideas, but it's not quite solidified yet. So you can create this form with all the information that you need as a designer to kind of go ahead and answer that. Um, I know this is something that probably a lot of you do as graphic, as graphic designers, so just kind of know if you're not doing it, you should. Um, so we just put questions like, who is your audience? What is your use case? Where is it going? Uh, what are the dimensions of the specific file you want? So really great. Um, I know Brian just posted in there, like we have a form, but nobody uses it. And we've definitely had that sometimes um, where We've created it and it just kind of sits there. Uh, but the best thing you can do is when they do request something, you just immediately reply with like, yeah, great, yeah, I'd love to work on it. Here's that form, can you fill it out? So that's something that we've been trying to be just pretty strict on is just like, we literally won't do anything unless you fill out the form. And that also means don't make the form painful because if it's painful and super long and tedious, then they won't want to fill it out. So kind of have to have a strike of a balance um, like that too. Um, so we're gonna do a poll question, um, just kind of spice things up. So we'd like to know with all these requests that you're receiving, how quickly are your requests being fulfilled? I think this will just be kind of great just to know as we're all designers, just kind of get some feedback of just knowing we're not alone in how many requests we're getting. So are, does it take a couple of days, maybe one to two weeks, a few months? Um, just know if it is like something like two months or more, hopefully that isn't the regular. Um, and if it is, then I definitely recommend setting up some templates that way, if they're requesting something small, they can just do it and they don't have to wait. So let's click end poll and we'll share those results. So it looks like the majority of us 
are doing one to two weeks, which I think is definitely reasonable for us. And that's something we can do. Uh, and then it looks like a couple of days was next for at 36%. So cool. Um, tip number six. So making templates easy to use. Um, and this is something that's really hard, especially as a designer, when you have like this amazing design, um, but you want it to make it as easy as possible to use. I've seen some people make templates and it has like opacity and a filter on top and then this crazy graphic and a bunch of shapes everywhere. And if they're trying to swap out one image, it's like really hard and they, it's just confusing because they don't really know how that design software works. So this is just a screenshot of one of our social media templates that we use for webinar announcements. So something very simple, we lock down the button at the bottom, register now, usually doesn't ever change. Um, and then in yellow, we have the part where they can go in, the font stays intact, they can go in, type in a new title for the webinar. Um, and then something that I really love about LucidPress, I know Google Sheets also has this, um, Google Docs, is where you can add a note or a comment. Um, and that just is really essential for providing just simple instructions for people to use um, as they're using templates. Um, for them, it's it's a new thing. They, they aren't used to designing. So if you put in notes like, hey, if you're switching out the image, you should make sure it's black and white, change the opacity 20%. Done, just simple instructions, makes it very easy. Um, so that's really great. Tip number seven. So this is all about leveraging data and analytics. Um, so I highly recommend if you're looking for somewhere for just kind of putting all of your templates or kind of organizing, if you can get anal analytics, it's amazing. It really helps kind of drive that adoption. So in LucidPress, we can sort by most popular, which is something that's pretty common um, with most template softwares. So you can just quickly see at a glance, um, as a designer, I can say, hey, the blog header image set, the slide deck, those are our top two templates. Um, and I can ask, you know, why are those our top templates? Maybe they need a refresh because they're being used so often. Maybe I need to kind of go back and tweak the design a bit. Um, and then I can also use a lot of that information for the ones that are at the bottom of the list. Maybe they're not being used at all. And so I can go in, ask why, um, tweak the design, make it maybe easier to use, ask the team, you know, hey, are you guys even gonna use this template? Um, so I can just go in and update that. Some other cool things you can do with analytics um, is we gathered this data about how many documents were created um, over the past 90 days. And we kind of posted this in Slack and um, it's just basically a list of the top users in, in LucidPress. So this was something that was pretty cool for them to see. And uh, it also helps us recognize who are our top users, why are they our top users, and how can they um, help promote to people who aren't really using templates. So pretty cool there. Um, and then also kind of another thing along with that, uh, we did a raffle for people who um, updated their email signature. So we actually launched our new branding in January and we wanted everyone to use their new, uh, their new email signature. And we said, hey, very simple, just send us a screenshot of your new email um, and we will enter you into a raffle. We did a funny GIF of our boss like throwing money. Um, so it was just very simple and we got literally 100% of people to update their email signature in a week. So great things to do, um, kind of a great idea there. Um, and our last tip, um, and we've mentioned this definitely throughout the, the webinar, um, is to get continual feedback from your template users. So <clears throat> even when you have a few templates already created, it's definitely essential to just keep asking those specific questions. I know what I like to do is um, I'll focus on one department first, so I'll focus on sales, get them some templates going, um, and then I'll go to another department, um, maybe like engineering, ask them, you know, what templates do you want, and then work on them. And that really kind of helps go back and forth. I can then go back to sales, ask them how is it going, see which templates they want, and then go back and go back and forth. Um, one idea that we also have for gathering feedback is we'll send a form. Um, we try to do it at least once a quarter or maybe like twice a year of just these simple questions of like, do you know where to find marketing collateral? So you can kind of see it's definitely not as high as we want it to be. So we know we need to increase that. And we created that Confluence page in order to help that. 
Um, and then we ask like, is it sufficient for your role? Is all of the content we're making helpful for you? Um, and if not, like what content is most helpful for you? Okay, we know that one pagers and videos, you guys voted for that one the most. We can definitely work on those and kind of bust those out. <laughs> Michelle, that's kind of funny. Uh, you liked the pink shower cap cat. That's great. Um, so yeah, I'd love to, if you guys have answers for Lauren's question about, you know, what are people using for, for form collection? So I definitely use Asana and Google Forms. There's definitely others out there. So be sure to um, enter those in for her. So that's about it. Those are our eight tips for increasing adoption for your brand templates. Um, just as a summary, just pick one of these tips, one or two of them um, that will be most beneficial for you. Uh, create, go and gather feedback from your users, see which template's gonna be most helpful for them, create it, promote with excitement, um, release it, and then gather that feedback. So that's a summary of our eight um, tips. Um, before we jump into the Q&A, um, we just want to announce our next webinar will be hosted by our Director of Marketing, um, The Secret to Doubling Your Creative Team's Output in Half the Time. So Garrett always does an amazing job, so be sure you go and register for that. It's just bit.ly slash brand templating 101. Um, and now we will turn the time over to V. She's going to do um, our random name selection for our free DoorDash gift card. And yeah, as she's doing that, make sure you go and put questions into the Q&A or into the chat, and we'll be sure to enter or just answer those questions after that. So if everyone has a little bit of a drum roll, we'll wait and see <laughs> when or how random is random. It's pretty random. We just take basically who's attending, spit it out into an Excel doc, and then it just randomly sorts it. So. So it looks like V entered in. Today's DoorDash winners are, oh, we have two winners. Look at that, I didn't even know. Um, Brian Daggett and Alexis Crabtree. So we'll be reaching out to both of you um, after this webinar and get you that DoorDash gift card. Cool, so now let's jump into um, questions. So whatever questions you have, um, send them to us specifically about design, um, templates, anything like that, and I can kind of provide some insights and resources there. I'm going to go over to our Slack. Okay, so the first question I'm going to focus on is we have, um, we have many people customizing pages on our website. Is there a way to use Lucipress to create a template for web pages? Um, yeah, Lucipress is definitely designed more for uh, uh, just like print and digital um, content, like this slide deck, for example, <clears throat> was built in Lucipress um, for actually like coding for websites. We don't have that functionality, um, but I know like our team uses Lucipress when we're creating like mockups um, and things like that. So that's kind of an idea. If anyone has any other options of how they've created web templates, then you can go ahead and enter that. I want to say the other day I was looking up um, I don't think it was called HubSpot. I can't remember what it is, but one of them did have website templates that you could use. I don't think Wix has that either, and I've used Wix a lot, so that doesn't. Um, next question is, can Lucipress share fonts? So kind of a few questions about Lucipress. Um, I.e. keeping up with all the fonts we use can get confusing and making sure content isn't on brand in fonts. Um, yes, yeah, so Lucipress, so as a admin, you upload your fonts, you put it in there, um, and uh, basically anyone who's using a specific template, you can designate whether or not they have access to only your brand fonts or like all of our fonts in Lucipress. Normally people will select only the brand fonts that you upload. And then in your locking, you can say whether or not you want to lock down the actual font that you choose. So for example, this questions was in Roboto, I think. So I can lock it down so it can only be Roboto bold and they can't change it. Um, or I can leave the style unlocked, that way they can go in and they can adjust with any of the brand fonts that we have available. So that's kind of one option. Uh, great questions. Um, let's see, can Lucipress hold our assets or do we need to host those on a different platform? Um, yeah, so Lucipress will basically host all of your digital uh, and kind of print products 
all in Looser Press. Uh, you can also upload like all of your images. So it has a great image library. You can kind of organize it into folders that way. Uh, trying to think of what other assets. But like if you're thinking like videos and stuff, like right now, um, Looser Press doesn't have the option to like house your videos for people to download, if that makes sense. So, um, okay, let's see. Um, I'll just answer Janelle's most recent question. So we have three brands for different divisions of our company. Can we create multiple brand asset collections within Lucid Press? Um, this is a great question. Um, this has been something that's definitely been on our radar, uh, but not yet. So kind of people, what people have been doing at Lucid, so we have the company is Lucid, but we have Lucid Press and Lucid Chart. So we have two different products, two different brands. Um, and right now we do have kind of both in there. We like all of our brand colors are kind of shared and um, our fonts and things like that. Uh, but it is something down the road where we would like to make it even more split so that if you're making a template, you only have access to, you know, those specific brand colors and not the other brand colors. Um, but a lot of that can be controlled in locking. So if you're making a template for one product or one brand, you can lock down that specific style, convert that to a template and only share it with people who are using that specific brand if they're not, you know, needing all the other brand assets. So that's kind of one option there. Um, let's see. Can Loose Press work with EPS logo files? Oh, wow, you guys are getting some deep questions. So uh, Loose Press supports um, PNG, JPEG, and uh, SVG files. EPS is one of those where it just like does not come in. So we highly recommend if you're using EPS that you just use SVG files instead. Um, or you can just convert them to PNG and they come in fine. We also support Photoshop files. They'll come in, but they won't come in with all of your layers. So just kind of be prepared for that. Um, but the best functionality that we have is InDesign. So if you have your InDesign files, you can import that into Lucid Press and all of your different layers will come in as well. So pretty cool. Um, yeah, let's see what other questions. Looks like we have a few more minutes. Let's see, will Loose Press work with WebDAM? Um, I'm not really sure even what WebDAM is, but I don't think we do. <laughs> um, so that is something we can definitely check on. Let us know. I'm not really sure, so good to know. Uh, other question is, how do we get a list of our top active users in Lucid Press? This is something that is, um, as far as I know, available only in our business subscription. Um, so if you're on our pro or our team account, then on something on our, on our business subscription, you can get that list. So pretty cool. Um, how many seats are necessary for users of the templates that we've created? <clears throat> I'm assuming you're asking like, can you share the template with one person? If not, let me know in the chat if that's not right. Um, what's really nice in Lucid Press is, yeah, you can basically get as many licenses as you need um, that kind of fit your organization. And then when you're creating a template, you can actually choose to share it with uh, specific individuals, maybe just one person. So like, sometimes I work with V and she's the one that does all of our events and I only share an event template with her. Um, or you can share it with the entire sales department. So you can kind of have that um, information there. Let's see. I want to create a system that everyone can use the assets we provide to create their own social media graphics, email templates, flyers, videos, etc. How could Lucid Press assist with that? Um, yeah, great question. So uh, yeah, Lucid Press definitely built for this. So if you're trying to create basically just like a hub for your social graphics, your, your email templates, flyers, um, videos is the one thing where you can put videos in a specific document or a template, but like actually housing the file is to be yet to happen. So we'll see. Um, so basically you would just either import from InDesign, uh, just directly add all of your designs into Lucid Press. You can also create from scratch, very easy. Um, I was, I came from a background with definitely Adobe background, but learning Lucid Press was literally like, did not take me long at all. It's pretty much like same layout and everything. 
And so you can build from scratch in there. Uh, really nice, you can build email templates, slide decks, flyers. Uh, we have social media posts, that's kind of our top ones there. Um, lock things down, share it out. So that's kind of how that, that works. So if you have more questions, let me know. Um, yeah, any other questions that anybody has? I'm gonna slowly go through this chat, make sure I didn't miss any. Let's see. Oh, and V put, just put a link down if you want to register for our next webinar, you can go in there. So um, you could send me some sample email templates. Yeah, we could. So those are great. Um, and if you kind of remember, we have, where was that? It was our newsletter, this one. So this is one that I made. I wanted it very simple since I'm kind of updating it every month. Um, so that was made in Lucipress. Um, I downloaded um, loose rest has the option you can download the html and then i just added it to gmail and sent it out so we also have integrations with mailchimp constant contact and another c1 that's not coming to my brain right now but we have three integrations for for email so you can design them in loose press lock things down and then open it in mailchimp and send it out so pretty cool awesome Cool, so I think that's it. Yeah, and as, as V mentioned, we'll be sending out the recording to this webinar. You can watch it at double speed. Uh, and that's about it. Let us know if you have any other specific questions. Thanks everybody for joining.